Greetings, Kindred. I am Voivode Maquette, and welcome back to My World of Darkness. And another episode of the Thicker Than Water recap. Um, I am... I feel so lost without being in Portland. Uh, now that we're in Chicago, I just... I don't know. I feel like I'm missing something. I'm missing... <laughs> my NPCs, my, my SPCs. I'm missing the city itself, which I consider an SPC with how much intricate knowledge I have on the city. Um, but I am also enjoying the Chicago stuff, like, massively. This time around, um, not much happened, um, but we are kick-starting off an arc, a story arc. I guess, I mean, just jumping into it, uh, so much little, so many little things happened. Um, because we're in a story arc, we're, we're going day by day. So this actually continues off the next night from last game, um, where Gabriel ended up staying in a, I, I guess we could call it a safe house, uh, of the One-Eyed King. He actually stayed in T-Bone's personal house uh t-bone being one of the retainers of the one-eyed king um the rest of the coterie or i, I should i can't even say the rest of the coterie because it was so split up and far in between um the uh the coterie that went to the asylum establishment that is in gary ended up staying in the asylum or staying in a in a, in a room at the asylum thanks to uh williams smiles uh connections with Jeanette, uh, the proprietor of the area. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It was just, it was very, very interesting. Um, I guess to, to catch up everything exactly as it happened when, when, um, Gabriel woke up, he finds himself in a dark room that is set up for vampire care. Uh, this is obviously a, uh, a room that's set up as a safe house for kindreds so they have daylight protectors. He's in a master bedroom that has blackout curtains on the walls. Behind that, there's cardboard duct tape to the glass uh, so that nothing will get in here. Uh, there are some extra clothes and things like that, which Gabriel completely ignores. But when he walks out into what he thought was going to be an empty house, there is music playing, the room being soundproof. He didn't notice it before. There is a complete drug fest happening outside, complete with small children running around the chaos, playing with with toys not two inches from cocaine lie down on table and people smoking crack pipes. There's a police officer in the kitchen drinking a beer and joking with some of the more in-charge individuals. And it's so interesting to see the differences between someone who started their character off with a Sabat mindset and others who did not. Because where the other people are just like calculating how they would handle this, the other players are calculating how they would handle this in character, Gabriel just shrugs it off and does not care at all. Um, he gets shown out to where his bike is and then decides that he's going to head on over to William's condo. Uh, and he heads out. As that is going on, uh, the other ones wake up on a dirty, filthy mattress, feeling like things are crawling all over them inside this back storeroom uh, at the asylum. Because there are things crawling on them. This place is bug infested. And I, I just did my best to make it so that the the dirtiness of Gary, that the, 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 the fact that nature has just taken over this place... Um, shows even in the asylum this brand new establishment for kindred at this place um they get out uh and when they leave the building they find that the car was stolen doesn't really bother william at all because it was also a stolen car <laughs> from the, he had he had taken it but uh as they're trying to make their way and find a way home because they realize that they are quite some way from chicago uh, they start walking down the street looking for cross streets because most of the signs, most of the street signs in this place have been stolen. Now back in Chicago, <laughs> as Gabriel arrives at 
William's condo because he has a key. Apparently, William's just handing out his keys from to his haven. Um, when he gets in there, he finds that there's already an occupant at this place, and it's not who he expected. Uh, it's L, our beloved Gangrel, uh, is is uh, shacking up at William's condo. <laughs> And is also surprised when Gabriel walks in, and not the Melkavian himself. So, this is where some interesting things happen. They decide that they're going to call the condo. Uh, William, William and the others decide that they're going to call the condo to try to figure this out. And I, this is where William became strange, uh, went from strange to disturbing. Because apparently... Uh, during downtimes, L had offered to model for him uh, for a sculpture. And when they hear a phone ringing, it's coming from a sculpture of L on a table. Uh, probably about two foot tall or something like that, but it's her chest. It opens up to reveal a cabinet with a phone inside. I don't... Dude, I don't know. <laughs> William. That's all I can say. He's a very strange character. Um, they call and uh, eventually, uh, eventually it's worked out that they're going to... Um, that Gabriel and Elle are going to drive to Gary and pick them up. And the rest of the group is stuck waiting, which is actually kind of an interesting thing because there's actually a full-on hour uh, of the game where... Uh, L and Gabriel get some time alone in a car to just talk. These two gangrel are just discussing life and the city and the way things are working. And I've already set those two down on a path of plotline. Um, the night before, when L was performing, Rosa Hernandez, the gangrel primogen, was there listening to her set. Uh, during a break, she had asked if there was anything that Elle could do for her, and she told her that she would wait until after the set was over because she did not want to distract her from work. And she didn't want to be interrupted during the conversation. But after everything was said and done, they finally got together and started talking. And Rosa had come asking for a favor. And that's that Elle... Being the driver that she is, being the person who tends to be hired to pick kindred up who are coming into Chicago and take them where they're going, she's known to be at the airport. And since she's known to be at the airport, she can get away with being there more often than any of the hounds could, or the wolf pack, or even Rosa herself. And Rosa explains to Elle that Flyboy, the kindred who runs the airport, uh, may not know this, but there seem to be CIA snooping around the airport, and that is terrifying. Especially since, as Rosa puts it, the prince is expecting a visitor within the next few months. And they need to make sure that the airport is a safe place before they actually come through. Elle agrees that she will help with some negotiation and that is one of the things that her and Gabriel begin talking about while they're on their drive the others on the other hand which are uh, William Tinia and Annette are uh, able to finally find a place that has a road sign and that they can give an address to be picked up, which is this old abandoned house which is being completely destroyed by nature. Around this time, however, as they're sitting there picking at the crumbling foundations, and uh, oh my god, Annette does one of the creepiest things. Uh, I mean, not creepy, just strange, really. Because as William and Tinia are sitting there talking about their situation and where they are, and they notice that they're being watched by a small girl who eventually ends up being introduced as Mal Davis uh, across the street who's just smoking a cigarette and watching the events take place before her uh, Annette climbs the tree that's growing out of the side of the house 
finds a bird nest and just drains the bird on the spot. And then steals the eggs, uses Blush of Health to get some body warmth, and puts the a puts the eggs under her hat and begins waiting. It I don't know. It's just I mean, I guess, I guess there's an under there's an understanding. She's actually working on building up retainers. Uh, animal retainers, and truthfully, if she can get those baby birds to hatch, um, she might actually have a better control over them than if she had just like used animalism to to force them into her into her control. So there, I mean, there's a lot of back and forth between both groups here. Um, I should let you know that Cole, uh, Justin's player, is not here tonight. So they are off doing their own thing, not covered in this story. Um, eventually, the SUV that uh, that Gabriel and Elle are driving do pull up to the address, and as they wave and say hi, they just keep on driving. They're just messing with them. Eventually, they do just turn around and they pick them up, and they head on back to uh, William's condo. Um, I use this opportunity just to show that there are kindred in Gary. Uh, introducing Mal Davis, um, nothing really came out of it. It was literally just to show people that there are other kindred in that city. And also, when I do decide to bring any of the Anarchs from Gary in to start causing problems or anything like that, they'll at least have somebody they can recognize. The rest of the night is actually spent discussing the two plot lines that are going on through the night. They head on back to William's condo, showers are taken, poison is mixed because William's a botanist and he has a secret plant lab in the back. Um, but for the most part, it literally is just discussion on how things are going to go. I, as a storyteller, was under the impression that eventually maybe something would actually occur. That they might go to the airport to look into the CIA situation. Or that Gabriel might take them to introduce them to the One-Eyed King. Uh, something like that. But neither happened. They actually spent the majority of the night just discussing the two major situations and how they should handle these things. As a storyteller, I love these nights. These are nights where the players get together, they express the interest of what they might be more inclined to follow as far as, far as storylines go, and it's all roleplay. There's there's next to no dice rolls or anything like that. It was, uh, it was a very pleasant, easygoing night. Um, but unfortunately for recaps, there's really not much to report on. Um, I don't really care about that, though, because this is... It was an enjoyable night all the way around. Um, I really can't wait to see how things go into this, because basically we spent an entire session in planning. And whatever the characters decide to do, we are on a good development to being able to handle both of these situations, both the One-Eyed King and the possible CIA investigation going on at O'Hare International Airport, which could be a detriment to the Kindred Society in general. So that's all I have. That's it. Very short, sweet, um, well-organized night as far as things were going, at least on my end. And uh, I cannot wait to, to see what happens after this. I am Voivode Maquette. This is my world of darkness. And my kindred are starting to become entwined into the machinations of Chicago. More to come. Good evening. <laughs>